Want to know what load to shoot for ducks? Well, you've come to the right place. I tested over 30 loads. Find out what I learned on today's video. I'm Joel Strickland, and this is part eight of my shotgunning series, right here on Surviving Duck Season. Thanks for watching Surviving Duck Season, where we feed your waterfowl obsession and help you to maximize your hunting experience. And dialing in your shot shell choice is what we're gonna do today. On this video, you're not gonna hear me tell you what ammo you should buy. I wouldn't begin to assume what's best for you. Everyone has different needs and budget, shooting different types of birds in different areas. Pay attention, because by the end of this video, you're gonna know how to choose the right ammo for you. Now in 2019, I decided it was time to retire my old Remington 8 70 12 gauge. I was having shoulder problems and I was just tired of the kick. So I started looking for a new shotgun. And through the process, I learned so much about shotguns and ammo and choke tubes that I wanted to share it with everyone. I learned things that I never knew, even though I'd been hunting for more than 30 years. Over the last two and a half years, I've tested and hunted with over 30 different loads, including loads for 12 gauge, 20 gauge, and 28 gauge. From Winchester, Federal, Fiocchi, Boss, Heavy Shot, Apex, Kent, Remington, Migra, Browning, and Rio. Today, I'll share the high points of what I learned through shooting thousands of rounds. So, let's talk about how to choose a shotgun shell. It sounds super basic, but I promise you that even the majority of you veteran hunters watching this video have never heard anyone lay it all out like I will on this video. It's not new information though. I didn't come up with all this. It's been around if you've just been interested enough to look for it yourself. I tested theories and used the latest technology and methods to prove or debunk some of the marketing claims. There's a lot of ground to cover, and I'll get into as many of the specifics as I can to make my points. But quite honestly, I could make entire videos on nearly every topic that I get into today. So if after you watch this video, there are things that you wanna know more about, please let me know down in the comments. This band right here is very memorable to me. I got it the very first time I used a spinning wing decoy way back in 1997, but I didn't shoot the duck. As we were setting up decoys that day, my dog brought me a crippled gadwall that evidently had made its way onto the field that I was hunting for the very first time that year. Someone else shot that duck somewhere else and it crippled off. It was banded. He probably never knew though. As duck hunters, our goal is a dead duck in our hand not a cripple that we had to chase. And certainly, we don't wanna be lamenting over the cripple that got away, banded or not. What does it take to kill a duck or a goose? One or two pellets in the vital area is what it takes. Now there are three areas that if you put a pellet in there, it's dead, not going anywhere. That's the brain, the heart, and the cervical vertebrae, basically the neck bones. Anything else may result in a cripple that you may or may not retrieve. So how do we get that? Well, we're not shooting a pellet rifle. There's no laser accuracy to shotgunning. It's all about pattern and penetration. Basically, put enough pellets on target and your odds are very high for success. So first, we look at the type of pattern that you need. A 30 inch circle at the desired target range. And in that 30 inch circle, you want to see an even distribution of pellets, not too far apart, no big gaps or holes in it. There are multiple things that factor into what makes a pattern, whether it's good or bad, and certainly ways of changing it, often improving it. And those things are your pellet size and type, pellet count, muzzle velocity, distance, and then there's your shotgun and choke. There's no perfect shell or combination of all of that stuff. There's lots of variables and many trade-offs. These will be decisions that you're gonna have to make. 
And the best way for me to explain it is to start off with the desired goal and then help you figure out how to get that. So we know what it takes to kill a duck or a goose. And we know that we need a good pattern because if there's not enough pellets in a decent pattern, your odds are very low that you're gonna kill the bird. All right, how many pellets do you need? That's a great question. It depends on what size bird. The smaller the bird, the more pellets, so that the pellets are close enough together in your pattern. So more pellets for teal, a little less are gonna be necessary for a mallard sized duck, and even a few less for a goose. So if I'm strictly shooting teal sized ducks, then I'm gonna be putting a minimum of 140 pellets in that 30 inch circle at the range that I plan to shoot them. If I'm shooting mallards and other puddle ducks, I used to go with 90 pellets, but now I've adopted a more conservative opinion and look for at least 100 pellets in a circle. For speckle belly geese and snow geese, 75 pellets in the pattern. And for large Canada geese, 60. So why those pellet counts? Because that's the number of pellets in your pattern it takes to ensure that at least a few of them will reach a vital area. I know of another popular lethality chart out there that says 85 minimum pellets for mallards, but that's the same chart that says number six steel shot is good for mallards from 20 to 45 yards. Take your pick. Now we know how many pellets we need to get on target. How do we get there? Shot size, shell length, gauge. What you should be most concerned with is shot size and load size. Go with the smallest size pellets that you can use to get the job done. Remember, the smaller the pellet, the more of them will be in your load. Don't get hung up on length of shell or even gauge. Remember, an ounce and an eighth is an ounce and an eighth, no matter what size cartridge you put it in. Steel Shot certainly gives you less options because of the nature of the light pellets, but by using any other denser pellets, it opens up an entire new world of choices for you. Here's a few suggestions on shot sizes for steel. If you're shooting teal size ducks, shooting sixes and seven and a halves are good. For larger ducks, I suggest shooting twos, threes, or fours. I rarely shoot a three inch 12 gauge shell. The problem with many of the three inch shells and every three and a half inch shells that I've ever shot is felt recoil. Too much recoil is a major reason for a lot of hunters missing. So when I choose a load, the felt recoil is a big factor for me. All right, test me on this one, guys. Find yourself a lighter recoiling shotgun and load, and you will be a more consistent shooter. Fact. Kick, I'm a man. The kick don't bother me. The first shot is often not the one to worry about. It's the follow-up shots it can throw your aim off just enough. Let's not be lucky, let's be good. Now here's how we do it. If we're trying to get to a number on target, let's say 100 plus pellets for ducks, you obviously need to choose a load that has many more than 100 pellets because they're not all gonna make it in that 30 inch circle. And there are plenty of pellet count charts online that will tell you how many steel or bismuth or whatever kind of pellets will be in a certain size load. I'll link some of those down in the description part of this video for you. This is where you can see if certain loads will even have enough pellets before you go and buy the shells and pattern them in your gun. An ounce and an eighth number twos has 140 pellets. One and a quarter has 155 pellets and one in three eighths ounce load has 171 pellets. When you go to number threes, the count goes up and fours even higher. What about steel BBs? Look at the chart. You're likely never gonna get there with the numbers that you need with a 12 gauge or smaller. I shot several different BB loads from Rio, Winchester, and Federal. When you look at the pattern, you can see that not only are there not enough pellets in the 30 inch circle, but also look how far apart they are. 
but I shoot BBs all the time at ducks. Okay, well, now you know why you're getting so many cripples. You're welcome. I shot steel number fours, one and an eighth ounce load at 40 yards, and it met the minimum threshold of 100 pellets in a 30 inch circle with 107 pellets. But just because it's good enough to pattern on target with enough pellets, doesn't mean it's lethally effective. Remember, it has to penetrate feathers, skin, break bones, or whatever to get deep enough to get to the vital areas. I have another video on speed, lethality, and ballistics gel. It'll give more clarity to these topics. I really appreciate all your feedback and support on my channel over the last several years, and I wanted to let you know how you could participate in helping me make more videos like this one, and that is by going to the website and checking out all the new merch we have. And if you find something that you like, pick some up for yourself. We've got some great quarter zip pullovers just like this one, some t-shirts and other things. Make a great gift for somebody that you like. You can find it at survivingduckseason.com. Again, thanks for your support. So will twos, threes, and fours be lethally effective on ducks at 40 yards? I watch a lot of people shoot every year, and I see 1,500 birds or more die from a shotgun every season. I hold that many birds in my hand. Now, while that may not qualify as empirical scientific research, it is worth something. And I can tell you from my own shooting and observations of others that number four steel at 40 yards is the maximum range. And I don't really recommend it to most people. Twos and threes, different story. Years ago, when I shot steel on a regular basis, I preferred dry lock number threes. Remember, steel shot for ducks in a two or a three will have an effective lethal range of about 45 yards. I shoot ducks all the time past 45 yards with steel shot. I'm not saying that steel won't knock a duck down further than that, but what I am saying is that most shooters are not able to consistently have clean kills on ducks beyond 40 or 45 yards with steel shot. If you're needing to consistently shoot beyond 35 yards, there are certainly much better options than steel shot. Duck hunting to me is ducks trying to land in my decoys, so I'm always looking for that 20 yard shot. But realistically, half my day shooting is further than that. And unless you're shooting a private ground hidey hole, I'd expect that most of you are the same. Why are you hating on steel? I know it sounds like I don't like steel, and you're right. Steel shot is not my preferred shot type, and I've held that opinion for 30 years. I wanted steel to be better, and I really hoped it would be. While there are a few minor improvements that have been made over the years with steel, it's largely performed the same for at least the last 20 years. So how do the different loads compare? Like I said, I shot a bunch of loads, and I'll give you my opinion on a few of them and give you some actual prices on shells as of November 1, 2022. Now, as a general rule, slower muzzle velocity under 1,400 feet per second pattern much better than 1,500 feet per second and above. Federal Speed Shock, Winchester Expert, Heavy Steel, all are dirty, inexpensive loads. You get what you pay for, except in the case of Heavy Steel. And when we weighed the shot out of three of those loads, they were four or five pellets shy of a full load, possibly because they were also weighing in the flaxseed filler. Look at these pellets too. I mean, they're just kind of all over the place. Now with steel shot, micro improvements probably do help you at the maximum range. So I'll say that it's worth it to spend the extra money on premium plated steel. They are round, more uniform, and pattern better. Let's take a look at the differences between these two. Here's the Winchester Expert, and here is the Winchester Dry Lock. These are both number twos. Now you can see with the Expert, uh, they're just not that round. Uh, there's some different sizes of shot in there. Uh, this just not smooth and they, they don't roll around quite as easily 
uh, as the dry lock. The dry lock is, is very, very smooth. They all look pretty much the same size. They roll around in there really, really easily. Uh, big difference. And so here's the number twos at 1,300 feet a second, 40 yards. And you can see that my hands here, you can see there are, there's a few little gaps, but for the most part, it's pretty even distribution. 114 pellets in the 30 inch circle. So what you're looking at on the screen right now is the Target Telemetrics Shotgun Profiler phone app. I've been testing it for a few weeks. So far, it's pretty sweet. I'll give you a more detailed look at it on my next video. So this is the uh, 1,550 feet per second number two, and it's a it's the same size load. It's a one and three eighths. You can see that it's uh, it's got a decent distribution, but there are a lot bigger holes, a lot wider pattern, which is again typical for what we see with a faster shooting load. And then here is the Fiocchi. Uh, this is zinc plated steel shot. It's really round. You can see how smooth it is. It rolls around uh, in the glass very, very easily. And for an inexpensive steel shot, it's one of the better performers. Both the Fiocchi flyway steel and the Golden Waterfowl steel looked good, surprisingly good, when looking at the price. And both are zinc plated. Flyway steel, 82 cents a load. Golden Waterfowl, I did like a little better at 1,350 feet per second because it patterned better, 88 cents each. I have shot two shells each, so there's three different shots, two times each into the same block of gel. The black ones that you can see, there's probably about six pellets. Those are the expert number twos by Winchester. Uh, that's what we call the cheap shells. Uh, that has the probably the least amount of penetration. Um, one of the pellets looks like it did about even with the other ones, but the rest of them are, are right at the very back of the line. Then the next ones is the dry lock steel, and we shot two rounds of those. As you can see, there's a slight difference in the color. I'm not sure if you can tell. Uh, the, they're just slightly duller than the ones here. Now, th those ones that are in the very front, that's the Fiocchi uh, Golden Waterfowl Load. And it is, uh, it one of the rounds actually went way up here, and then the second round is back here, just, just a tiny fraction ahead of the dry lock. As you can see from this test, the plated steel shot got better penetration both from the dry lock and the Fiocchi at 40 yards. This is one of the many examples that I've seen that convinces me that plated is better than the non-plated steel. While I'm on premium steel, I will say that I see no advantage in the oddball shaped pellets like you see in Blindside and Black Cloud. I mean like zero difference in penetration over any other steel. Sorry. These are two great examples of marketing gimmicks. While they don't pattern as bad as you think they would, they don't pattern great. But leave it to the marketing team to convince you to buy it. <laughs> I can see it now when the R&D and marketing team at Winchester got together. These cube pellets are a train wreck. No matter what we do, they just scatter. I got it. Let's take a negative and turn it into a positive. We'll say 25% increased kill zone. Perfect. I've used a lot of non-steel loads over the last 20 years. And when it comes to bismuth, fours are an excellent choice and easily effective out past 45 yards. And I'm a big fan of number fives as well. There's a lot of pellets in either one of those shells, so a higher pattern density. In the last five years, there's been a resurgence in bismuth, and I guess just about every company out there has got a bismuth shell. One of the newer offerings is Winchester bismuth. I've shot two boxes of it in my testing. I'll give them props for a decent patterning load, but it's just not a fun load for me to shoot. I mean, it kicks so bad. 
mercy. Golly. $2.45 a round. This is the most expensive bismuth load. Only are available in three inch and in limited pellet sizes. In the last few years, I've hunted with Kent bismuth and quite a bit of the heavy bismuth too. My personal favorite bismuth load is an ounce and a quarter Boss 3.5 mix in a two and three quarter inch 12 gauge. I also really like the 20 gauge 3.5 load as well. It patterns great and it's an excellent choice for a multi-species hunt, including geese. I both tested and hunted with it a lot. I've also shot a lot of the Boss 2 and 3 quarter inch 12 gauge number 5s, as well as other sizes. At an average price of $1.62 a load, it's the least expensive bismuth load and performs as good or better than the other brands that I've used. They are light shooting and Boss has the largest selection of loads and shot sizes of any company offering bismuth. You sound like one of those Boss fanboys. Can you say anything bad about them? Well, I did have three shells that didn't fire on one of my hunts last year. <gasps> it had rained while I was hunting one day and I didn't realize that water had collected in my shell bag and then the shells sat in the bag for a couple of days. I count that as my fault. Oh. But out of 10 plus cases over the last five years, it's the only problem that I've had. Now I want to remind you that nobody's paying me to say good or bad things about any ammo or choke tube company. I'm sharing my experience, research, and a few opinions with you. Now if you've found a product that works good for you and it's different than what I like, that's cool. We can still be friends. Promise. Tungsten. The problem with many of the tungsten alloy loads is they don't tell you what the density is. If they don't say what it is on the box, I don't buy it. Unless it's 12 gram or more density, I really don't see the value of using it over bismuth. I've had great success using fours or sixes with the 12 gram or more tungsten shot. The effective range is out to 60 yards if you can get it to pattern well. The problem with it is that some of the tungsten blends are just not round. Heavy 12, $2.80 a round. Now this is stated to have a density of 12 grams per cubic centimeter. If this is truly the original heavy shot, then they have significantly lowered their prices, making this one of the least expensive tungsten shells available. Kent Tungsten Matrix, $5.80. Now the density is 10.8. It shoots nice, but man, that is so expensive for what you get. I mean, seriously, it's not that much cheaper than TSS and the density is less than lead. So that's not what I would be looking for in a tungsten load. Remington Wingmaster HD, $6.20 a load. It's 12 density, which is really, really good, but again, very expensive. You might as well shoot TSS for that price. TSS is a completely different thing. Uh, its effective range is certainly beyond 70 yards with seven, eights, and even nines. But most shooters, unfortunately, are ineffective at long distances. It's just tough to hit ducks that far. And most guys won't practice. Long range shooting is not my thing. I could care less to pass shoot ducks, but if I can get on them as they're flying straight away from me, Mm. I've paper bagged them several times uh, doing it that way. I shot a lot of the Apex loads both in testing and hunting. The performance of their 20 gauge consistently patterns much better for me over their 12 gauge loads. Number nines for ducks and if I'm mainly shooting geese I'd be shooting the number sevens. It's six dollars and 33 cents a load and that's cost prohibitive for many hunters. But for extreme long range shooting, like for sea ducks or for geese, it could be a good choice for you, even shooting it from a 28 gauge. What about the blended shot types like tungsten and steel or bismuth and steel? 
the bismuth steel blend absolutely makes no sense to me at all. I mean, why would you pay almost a buck fifty around to get 70% steel and 30% bismuth when you could buy a shell that's 100% copper plated bismuth for $1.60 a shell? I actually wasn't impressed with any of the blended shot type loads. It appears to be a cost savings at face value, but is it? Look at this shot string of TSS and steel blend. The TSS arrives with a six foot shot string, then there's a four foot gap, followed by an eight foot shot string of steel. I really wanna do more testing on this, but again, the cost of this versus tungsten alloy or bismuth, wouldn't you be better off just with all the same pellets? Just a question. What are the negatives? Steel shot's just too light to kill ducks. It just cripples them. When I shoot them, the pellets just bounce right off of them. Steel shot can be very effective when used properly in the right situation. It all comes down to knowing your distance and what your pattern is doing and then being able to actually hit them. <laughs> TSS will break your teeth. Yes, it will, and so will steel. The difference in TSS and steel breaking a tooth, though, is that you are way more likely to do it with steel shot because steel has very poor penetration, while TSS usually goes all the way through the bird. In the past two duck seasons, I either cleaned or witnessed the cleaning of over 30 ducks and geese that were confirmed to be shot with only TSS. And I didn't find one single TSS pellet. Now, not to say it won't happen, but with steel shot, you almost always find pellets. So in my opinion, be careful no matter what you shoot with pellets in the meat, but TSS is probably less to worry about than steel. Bismuth is brittle and it breaks and fragments. Yes, it can. However, most of the manufacturers of today's bismuth have figured out ways to limit that. One advantage of the Boss shell is that they are copper plated. Plating the bismuth greatly reduces fracturing. It also improves lubricity for better patterning and penetration. Bismuth and tungsten really aren't non-toxic. This is one that people are really splitting hairs over. Let's define what makes ammo non-toxic. It's a material that when ingested by birds will not be toxic to them. It also must be approved by U.S. Fish and Wildlife as a non-toxic ammo. I've had people cite things about bismuth and tungsten as it's unsafe, so I looked into it. If you breathe in tungsten dust or bismuth dust, it can lead to toxicity in humans, although very rare. Did you know that bismuth and tungsten are used in medical devices and treatments? Yep. You ever seen that before? Pepto-bismol, active ingredient, bismuth, and you eat it. That's right. <laughs> bismuth and tungsten can really be toxic to animals when you shoot them with it. Are you kidding me? <laughs> First of all, anything that you shoot at an animal that doesn't kill it within the first couple of minutes is not going to be good for them. Some potential of long-term poisoning because of being shot is pretty small compared to other injuries that would be sustained from being shot. My research and personal experience tells me that for the average shooter, higher density shot, higher than steel, equates to less cripples. TSS is too expensive. Yes, it is. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just expensive to make. Cost justifications and opinions. Now, there are no magic bullets or shot shells, as it were. Even the most expensive ammo in the world is still not going to hit the duck for you. Hitting them, that's your job. But if you are consistently having crippled ducks, or needing to put another one in them, then I'll tell you right now that some steel alternatives could actually cost you less than steel because you're shooting less. Here's something that I learned 20 years ago, and it's still true today. Most any legal load that you can shoot at a duck 
will get the job done at 20 yards, but I don't always shoot at 20 yards. I could shoot a duck with steel and watch him sail way out past 40 yards and hit the water with its head up and swim in. Then I've got to shoot at him three or four more times before I can get him. Even with a good dog, not to mention having to wait on the dog to chase him down or go after him myself, taking time away from my hunt. Chasing birds instead of calling them in and shooting them. Or shoot them one time with bismuth or tungsten and you're usually done. If you're just looking at it from a cost justification standpoint, look at the cost comparisons and see. Even with the cheapest steel shot at 80 cents a load, when you shoot two times, you're at a break even compared with Boss Bismuth. If you're shooting a dollar Kent fast steel and you shoot three times to kill a duck, it's cheaper to shoot heavy 12 or most any of the Bismuth loads and half price to shoot the Boss. You see what I'm saying? Most all of the Bismuth and Tungsten type ammo gives you better performance than steel. However, most of the lower density tungsten alloys don't perform much different than bismuth, but costs a lot more. TSS is certainly in a league of its own, but when you're shooting five, six, or seven dollar shells, you're not going to cost justify that. It's a specific tool used for a specific situation, or you just like shooting it, and that's cool too. If cost doesn't matter for you, then TSS is worth considering. Understand though that TSS does pattern very tight, so at closer range, it can be very difficult to hit the birds, even with a wide choke. So bottom line, decide between steel or something else. Then look at the shot charts to pick a load that has enough pellets in it and forget about length of shell. Then pattern that load at the range you plan to shoot your ducks. If you've got a good pattern with enough pellets in it, sweet. Oh, and to get the pattern dialed in, you gotta choose the right choke. And that's what I'm getting into on the next video. I tested 27 chokes from eight manufacturers. Find out what I learned. God bless you. I'm Joel Strickland, and I'll see you there.